Salsa Verde, green salsa. Man, I'm telling you, once you learn to make this, you're gonna hate that crap at Costco. You're gonna fall in love with the stuff. You're gonna get true one-itis, and Miss Verde is not gonna leave you for a better salsa the moment you slack off. We're talking it is good with chips, good on top of a few poached eggs, good on top of cooked meat. You can put this on top of just about anything. Boys, realize you don't have to choke back steamed chicken breast with flavorless broccoli all day to have a cut. So the ingredients you can play with. I'm going to keep it fairly traditional here. An onion, cilantro, a bunch of those green things there that you saw earlier called tomatillos. Some Mexican farmer scientist had this genius idea and crossed a tomato with a potato or something. I don't judge. They did good. Add any peppers you want. The ones I have in there are serranos, probably eight of them. Do not cut them before you fry them. Have a few knobs of garlic on hand and a lime. Add some salt and a cup of water and you're good to go. Uh, now that we have some time, alpha and beta. Everyone gets this wrong and some people get it wrong on purpose. So some science dudes living in the wilderness one day spotted some wolves. They noticed one of the wolves was bigger and boss the other wolves around. So they wrote a science paper about apex wolves in a pack. This has nothing to do with alpha or beta unless you're a wolf. And if you're a wolf, don't eat the salsa. The onions are poisonous. In fact, stay away from grapes too. You can't really aspire to be alpha any more than you can aspire to be personality. They're just placeholders for things that men have noticed that have elicited a different reaction from their girls. What you see me doing right now is putting a char on everything, except for one quarter of the onion, the cilantro, and the lime. If you've got a barbecue, use it. If not, the stovetop or the broiler works just as good. Throw the tomatillos face down, as well as three of the four onion quarters. You leave the last one uncharred, so it gives it a little bit of a fresh flavor profile, which is a good thing. Now, if you didn't listen and you cut your peppers, you're going to find out real quick why I said not to. This is basically homemade tear gas. So go open up the door and come back in 15 minutes when you can breathe again. Drizzle some olive oil into the preheated pan and you char it all to your liking. The more the better. What you see me doing here is a mild char, but you can really go as dark as you want. Alpha? Alpha is dopamine. Alpha is desire. Alpha is excitement. Beta, on the other hand, is serotonin. Beta is comfort. Beta is safety. So if you're talking about alpha and beta as archetypes, guys are either alpha males or beta males, alpha is either good and beta is bad, you still don't get it. But that's cool. You're going to get it today, as soon as you can find some tomatillos in a blender. So you might be asking yourself, why there's so much discussion in online men's communities that are focused on alpha, if it's not a placeholder for good and evil, and if it's not an archetype. That's because most men today are the safe second choice for a woman. Well, sometimes he's more like her 10th choice, but you get the idea. You've had your whole life conditioned towards this kind of weird impotence. Your mom kicks dad out and used you for comfort. She trained you to be her girlfriend. Your elementary school teachers scolded you if you ever raised your voice. Even every example you see on TV is about people provoking a man to get angry and then vilifying him for it. So once you got him where you want him, just throw him into the blender. The wife swears you have to put them in a certain order. I don't care. Just make sure it all fits. You've lived your whole life with a stunted set of alpha qualities. Now, some guys haven't. Either they had a good home life that encouraged them to be exciting, impulsive, maybe some healthy directions to focus their impulsiveness like sports, hard work on a ranch, military life. And this isn't the best example, but a lot of the poorest parts of society are exposed to a more feral part of human nature on a regular basis. There's a reason your local drug dealer and redneck thug are naturally spewing alpha qualities. Part of it is because drugs hit those same receptors, but a lot of it's in how they act. Impulsive, aloof, hard to get. So the reason the men communities bring them up is because of alpha qualities. Most guys need more of them. The women don't have to put up with her safe choice anymore. The last time there was enough danger around that a woman needed a man's safety was back when people had to fight off roaming gangs of bears and tigers and elephants and stuff. 
Nowadays, we got cops. We got military and Spider-Man. She's safe as hell. And if you're doubling down on giving more comfort, just means she's going to get bored and dry up like the Sahara. You don't have to take my word for it either. Find the closest dad bod sporting husband and ask him the last time he got a blowjob. And look him right in the eye. You'll see it if you look real close. It's that missing twinkle. Look hard, fellas. You're staring at a broken plow horse. Don't make the same mistakes. So this is where some of the tools that we use come into play. Working out, testosterone replacement therapy, avoiding estrogens in the environment. All these things hormonally build up your testosterone, which increases those alpha qualities. You're chemically muting your empathy. You're chemically building a shell of aloofness. You start seeing yourself as the prize, a healthy level of narcissism. Learning game as well. Push and pull, or making your behaviors an unpredictable mix of comfort and desire in the woman around you. So turn off the heat, take a cup of water, and deglaze your pan. Looks nice, huh? Give it a scrape with your spatula and pour that liquid flavor back into the blender. If you're looking for a plate or a one night stand, you push more. If you're with a wife and kid, you balance it with a calibrated mix of desire and comfort. If you push too hard on the desire, your girl gets anxiety. Like a wild stallion, she can only hold on for so long. Not so bad if you only need her for an evening, but if you want her around in the morning for some salsa and poached eggs, you probably want to have to give a little bit of extra care. BDSM communities call it having good aftercare. For an example, have you ever seen those women that stick around abusive relationships against all better sense? It's generally because the guy would use overly aggressive behavior, but then follow it up with amazing comfort. Now, I am not suggesting you abuse somebody and then buy them flowers. If you do that, you're probably going to go to prison, and just make sure you don't drop your tactical show while you're in the shower. Those pheromones don't care, son. Just take that extreme example to understand the idea of push and pull, alpha and beta, comfort and desire, and then apply it in your own life to meet your needs. So now you're going to chop those stems off your cilantro, squeeze in a lime, and add that last quarter of an onion. And blend it kind of coarsely. The more texture you keep in it, the better. And this stuff takes practice. Lots of it. Over a long period of time. You're never going to be able to learn it in a book. You're not going to be able to learn it in a video. And in this era of the Me Too hashtag, you really don't want to be screwing this up. This is what I mean when I say you want to be that lovable asshole. You want a good mix of comfort and desire in your behaviors. Alpha with a side of beta. And that's it. You can either eat it right away or you let it sit in the fridge overnight. You'll taste the difference if you wait. I didn't wait. <laughs>